Welcome back. In the previous episodes, we got something that technically flies, and is capable of, now poorly, driving. This alone took months, but there are a bunch more things on the to-do list before I will be satisfied with this project. Firstly, I need to buy a better microphone. The audio has been awful, and hopefully this is better. Next, I want to decrease the weight by both optimizing the frame and by condensing the electronics. I also want the mass to be as well centered between the props as possible to better balance the forces. Next, I need to find a way to increase range to more than a few feet, because bad things happen when I lose connection. I'd also like to improve the driving experience, as it's very difficult to drive. Lastly, I want it to look more like a car and get some first-person view of what the car sees. Oh yeah, I guess you probably want me to make it fly properly. As in, without tethers, and in a stabilized fashion. Well, we've only got a lot of work to do if we never get started, so let's get going. To tackle the first item, I shrank down the overall chassis, deciding on some more compact electronics, and did my best to maintain symmetry across the width of the car. The first obvious source of weight savings is the electronic speed controllers. I purchased a 4-in-1 speed controller, which should help considerably. Naturally, that requires a lot of wiring. I basically had to rewire the whole thing. So with the individual ESCs changed to one, I also decided to drop from an Arduino Uno to a Nano, and from short-range Bluetooth to ultra-long-range radio control, which, unfortunately, makes the app I spent months learning how to code and developing useless. Oh well, it served its purpose. Then I let my robots make it for me. I knew that the changes probably wouldn't just work, but this was probably the most frustrating. Only two channels were working at once. I assumed, at first, it was the new 4-in-1 ESC, but after testing driving, I noticed I could only either move or turn. I couldn't do both. This meant the issue was actually with the Arduino and its code. After about a month of banging my head against the wall, I came up with a viable solution. Turns out, this brand new Arduino Nano ESP32 can only send two signals in parallel, which isn't going to work for our four prop car. So I had to trick the Arduino into trying harder. How, you ask? Well, the Arduino sends a signal over 9,000 times a second. So I simply just alternate sending signals on every other tick of the Arduino, and voila, inertia does the rest, full control. Add in some toggle switch nonsense to alternate from ground to air mode, and now we have everything we had before in a lighter package. Now that the car is doing what I intended, we can add the props back and begin testing untethered. Unsurprisingly, it went poorly. Driving also still isn't great. Let's tackle the easier of the two and try to improve the driving. Let's decrease the wheel diameter to increase relative torque, as well as change the tread so it can drive better on carpet and grass. Quickly doing some bad editing gets all the wheels changed and the axles slash bearing collars replaced and improved in no time. Since we've done such a good job making this lighter, why don't we undo all that hard work for aesthetics? I wanted it to look more like a car, and I tried my best to do it without adding much weight. In the end, even with this wrapping, we still do come out ahead on the weight savings. The driving motors also clearly don't have enough torque, so I bought these bigger motors, which have, and I quote, big torque, 
which sounds like exactly what we need. The bigger motors needed different drive shafts to mount. And then testing reveals that the battery sits a bit too far back and really doesn't make the car want to stay flat. Printing a new battery holder to move the battery to the center of the car and applying the car wrap lets us finally get a drivable car. Sick and tired of that piece breaking, so we're going to make it out of carbon fiber PLA. I quickly learned that the support PLA material is not worth using due to the waste, but the part turned out great. I also broke the Arduino support bracket, so let's cut a new one. Let's break down the progress so far. Weight decreased, both frame size and electronics. Check. Mass centered between props. Check. Control range increased. Check. Driving improved. Check, check, check. Make it look more like a car. Check. FPV camera. I snuck it in there and it's not great, but it's the lightest camera I could find. So check. That just leaves that small pesky last one. Well, my approach isn't working. So to avoid insanity, let's try something different. Let's get a gyroscope with much better resolution. Then let's break down the problem. The car starts roughly flat, using math speak that is a roll of zero degrees. If we set the center of the car as the origin, we can then track rotation with time. Let's say that in a hundredth of a second, the car has rotated five degrees. That means that the car is now five degrees off of what we want it to be. The introduction of error gives us the opportunity to use something that I have never learned before, PID control. From what I can gather from the internet, it works like this. Let's say, then, at two hundredths of a second, we are now tilted 10 degrees. The chart populates as such. The P error, or proportional error, indicates proportionally how far from the target of zero degrees are we. The I error, or integral error, adds up, in total, how far off of the target have we been. The D error, or derivative error, shows since the last check how much closer or further are we from the target. Multiplying these by magical constants kp, ki, and kd gives a correction factor that can be applied to the relative thrusts of each of the four motors to attempt to return to flatness. 
How do we get these magical constants, you ask? By guessing, of course. Seriously, that's, that's what I can find on the internet as to how this is done. So with our hardware installed and code updated to handle both roll and pitch error, let's get to it. Untethered and off the ground. There you have it, folks. Subscribe so you don't miss the next one. See ya! Sad. It did take off, though. Okay. To be honest, I've been stuck at this point for a long time, so if you have any ideas how to get this thing any more stable without a complete redesign or compromising the goals of an articulating car into a flying car, please leave a comment. I posted the code on my website if that helps. If not, thanks anyway. I'm going to keep trying to figure this out on my own. I just figured it couldn't hurt to ask for help. See ya!